49 year old gentleman uh, with a, a background of a pacemaker, no other comorbidities, uh, with no previous trauma to the elbow presents now with a relatively short history of uh, uh, weakness of the left hand as well as numbness of the little and ring finger. So we suspect that he's got a uh, ulnar nerve problem. Uh, specifics on the examination, you want to know if the patient's got any neck pain because that's obviously uh, important differential diagnosis. Uh, you want to know about the issue of previous uh, elbow trauma because a previous elbow injury, uh, especially with cubitus valgus, can cause tardy ulnar nerve palsy. Um, and you also want to know how long it started and was there any precipitating causes like direct blow to the elbow. When it comes to examining him, we really want to examine the uh, ulnar nerve. So we start at the elbow and we look for a, a tunnel test to identify where the problem is. So tell me when you get the electric shock. There. So right over the cubital tunnel, he gets an electric shock. The other thing you can palpate here is I can palpate by putting gentle pressure over the medial epicondyle and flexing the elbow. I can actually feel, I can feel the, um, the nerve subluxing over the medial epicondyle. Um, so that's really the critical examination there. And you, you do notice that he has lost his end range extension. If you compare to this side, full extension, he's lost his end range extension. So we should possibly x-ray this to make sure there's no osteophytes or uh, other pathology in the cubital tunnel. It probably doesn't make much difference as you'll see when it comes to the uh, treatment going forward. Anyway, so now we're going to examine the uh, ulnar nerve. So the most important thing is you're trying to ascertain whether it's a high ulnar nerve problem or a low ulnar nerve problem. If it's a high ulnar nerve problem, then you'll lose sensation on the dorsal aspect as well because the sensory nerve comes off five centimeters proximal to the wrist, so it comes around this corner. If it's a distal ulnar nerve problem in Guillaume's canal, you'll only lose sensation to the volar aspect. So let's confirm, you, you have abnormal feeling here, eh? You, you're not feeling that, eh? And he's not feeling on this side. So he's lost sensation to both sides of the ulnar nerve, as well as classic splitting of the ring finger. You can feel there? There it feels numb, eh? Okay, so he's got splitting of the ring fingers. That's a typical ulnar nerve distribution sensory fallout. Nothing in the forearm. If you start finding problems in the forearm, then the pathology is more proximal. It might be something like a pancoast tumor, an axillary problem, because that will affect the whole of the medial cord, including the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. So the ulnar nerve never supplies anything in the forearm. That's really important. In terms of motor, it can be subtle, but you're looking for the long flexor to the little finger. So bend this finger for me, hard. The tip, just the tip. So testing only the FTP. Bend this one. Testing only the FTP. No, no, pull against me hard. So it's pretty, pull hard, hey? Don't, don't, don't show me how bad you are. Show me how good you are. It's actually very strong, this FTP. So that, that makes it more difficult. But an important sign is if you examine someone's first dorsal to osseous, doesn't matter how strong you are and how weak the patient is, it's very difficult to break the first dorsal to osseous by pushing over the PRP joint. So push hard as you can. I can't really push that down. If I push harder, I maybe could, but I have to apply a lot of force. If you look on this side, lift up as hard as you can. Over the PRP joint, nothing. Almost no resistance. So that puts it at about 3 over 5 power. The same goes for the um, abductor digiti minimi. Push as hard as you can. If I push over the PRP joint, I can just break it. If I push over the PRP joint, push hard, nothing. Very weak. And then if you do the uh, Fromans test, Put both hands on the table like this with your thumbs up. Clamp down as hard as you can. Clamp. Don't let me pull the paper out, eh? Don't not, do not let me pull the paper out. Ooh. Whatever you have to do to hold the paper. Hold, hold, hold. This one's coming out. So he's not doing the frame one test. I'm not sure why, but you can pinch with your thumb, eh? The thumb tip. Use your thumb tip. And this one, use your thumb tip. So even if you use your thumb, you can see there's an increased flexion on this side. So that's frame one sign. If you look for the other signs, um, he does not have gene sign, which is the hyperextension of the MP joint when he tries to do the Fromans test. Can you overlap your fingers like that? This side? The other way? And this one? You can't overlap that one, so you can't overlap his fingers. And he doesn't have a Wartenberg sign, or he might have a little bit of a Wartenberg sign. Put your hands both out like this. So Wartenberg sign is abduction of the little finger, but they're actually quite... Can you pull these two, this one in? There's a little bit of a Wartenberg sign where this is not staying next to the ring finger where this one is. So that's a Wartenberg sign. Um, so this guy's got a classic cubital tunnel syndrome. The full workup would be an x-ray of the elbow, including a cubital tunnel view, which is a skyline view to look at pathology in the cubital tunnel. But 
In this particular case, it doesn't matter because this patient is already subluxing his ulnar nerve. So he will need a release and transposition. So whatever you find on the x-ray, you're still going to do a transposition. In terms of what type of transposition, your options are subcutaneous or submuscular. And there are other options as well. But uh, without going into too much detail, um, there's intramuscular, subfascial, and uh, also just doing a medial epicondylectomy, allowing it to transpose itself. So here we'll do, because he's pretty well covered with a good layer of adipose tissue, we'll do a subcutaneous transposition on this gentleman and go and release the ulnar nerve and make sure it's not being traumatized. Um, and hopefully he'll get some, some recovery.